Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Diraj, and here we are going to talk about the QoS in regards to OpenStack storage, like in OpenStack storage, how can you have uh, QoS? Uh, so as we start with this, uh, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about Tintree, like what we do, and then we are going to talk about OpenStack Cinder and the QoS, and then conclude it. So where is Tintree basically in the whole of the OpenStack storage architecture? What you can see is uh, we provide block storage for the Cinder, uh, ephemeral storage for Nova, and then for Glass, we provide the image storage. Uh, what we do, basically, our OpenStack Cinder driver is uh, upstream, so all the distros are supported. So if you're using DevStack, Canonical, Ubuntu, whatnot, it should work out of the box. Uh, but uh, we have basically certified our drivers with Red Hat, Mirantis, and HP Helion. Uh, another thing about ours is like if you have a multi-hypervisor manager uh, type of situation where you are running the vCenter, Hyper-V, Zen Server, Rev, and OpenStack uh, in your data center for your enterprise applications and whatnot, uh, we provide a single storage. So with our VM store you, solution, you can manage all of them, the storage for all of them through our box. Uh, and the last thing what we provide is configurable QoS for tenants. So if you have a tenants uh, using your OpenStack Cloud, uh, their instances combined with their volumes can we basically provide the QoS in regards to what IOPS they need, the latency, and uh, whatnot. So why is QoS important and why uh, some of our customers who have used QoS uh, look towards that in regards to? So what we used to see is uh, physical data center, the life was easier that you had a hardware uh, which was mapped to the app, it was bare metal type of application, so it was optimized, it was great. But what happened with the uh, virtualized data center, you get the traditional storage, uh, basically VMs, a lot of VMs talking into this uh, hardware, and what it is doing is basically taking all type of data which is coming in, and then combining into one, and then pushing it to the hardware. So you are optimizing it for the aggregate load, but you're not optimizing anymore for the apps. So you're losing the translation of app requirements for the storage into a bundle of many apps and then talking to the storage. Uh, in the case of the VM-aware storage, which we basically provide, what we have done is your apps running with the VMs basically are optimized per workload. So there is nothing lost in the translation from your app requirements for storage, uh, the IOPS, the latency, and uh, the bandwidth you're looking, uh, and the capacity, and it's basically transparent to the storage. So that's the approach we took. Uh, so how do we see it in OpenStack and how people have used it uh, in OpenStack? Uh, so as you have multiple tenants on the OpenStack cloud, they are basically using the storage. And all these guys have their own requirement for the storage, right? They need their own IOPS, they need their own latency, the bandwidth and whatnot, the QoS, the quality of service. And also, like when you're using the compute, it's talking to the storage, you need a guaranteed performance in regards to the app which are using this compute. So all that combined, what we see is a multi-tenant environment on OpenStack uh, requires quite a good amount of QoS guaranteed performance uh, from the storage to the VMs and the instances so that your apps don't basically get bottlenecked, the response time remains higher, your dev test quality remains higher and whatnot. Uh, and how it came together, why it became important uh, for us, like uh, for the QS, uh, was like when we looked at uh, the couple of uh, previous years OpenStack Cinder presentations which were done by the other storage players and the uh, community folks, what we saw was Cinder is used for storage, running the VM, uh, VM disk volumes. Uh, it is basically ideal for performance sensitive apps. And the use cases are dev test, production application, traditional IT, and the database driven apps. And that's where we found the QS uh, requirement became the most important one for our customers quite a bit. 
like all the apps which they are developing are not equal. Uh, some of them are on the higher priority list. Some of them are on the lower priority list. So they want to make sure the performance for all of them is according to the priorities which are given to them. Uh, same for the database-driven apps. Some of them are very latency sensitive. Some of them can live with latency. Uh, so there are tiers in which you basically put them together, and that's how it comes together. So what we uh, basically do in regards to us uh, with the VM-aware storage is that we provide performance isolation. So with that, you get a performance guarantee for your all instances and the volumes. Uh, rather than having a left side, the funnel type of situation where you are getting all the app instances information into the uh, storage and then basically making a FIFO order or whatnot, uh, in our case, you get the instance based, the VM level QoS. So every instance has its own lane to guarantee the application performance. So let's say if you have a uh, cloud app, which is interacting with your customers on the e-commerce basis, you don't want the checkout line to basically be bottlenecked by any other application consuming that latency, bandwidth, or response time. In our case, with the VM-aware storage, you are able to give them their own lane of which guarantees the application performance so that it can remain there. How easy it is? Basically, uh, this is the picture from our VM store UI. What you do is basically uh, you take this red bar and you move up, up and down, and that's it. So there is nothing much to talk about, like, okay, you need to go and press some knobs, you need to go and do some uh, scripting and whatnot, nothing. It's basically whoever is your cloud admin and he has access to this dashboard. He knows the name of the instance, goes and searches for the instance, and then opens up the show graphic. And then what are the IOPS you're looking? And it will tell you also about the latency and also the contention impact. And you can bring it down there. So that, that has been one of the um, benefits which people have used. And then there is a situation where he doesn't want them to be starved out of the IOPS. Some minimum IOPS are required for your application to have the minimum viable performance SLA, which it has agreed to. So you can just move the minimum bar up and then be done with it. Uh, in some of the cases, what we have seen is people are running different instances, and all of them that have their own IOPS and latency requirements. So people just do uh, bring the tier, uh, like they take one tier, they set the threshold of minimum and max, and then that's it. So you can dynamically go in real time and establish the clear service level tiers and guaranteed performance for your uh, OpenStack cloud users. Uh, how easy it is, as I was talking, so these are the two instances there. You have the graph. You basically click configure QoS. You fill in the information, and that's it. And then you can keep going back and keep iterating on it. Some of the customers have gone to a point like where they want to optimize their code or the response time of their code to getting the, the maximum and minimum so close that, okay, the all the diverse environment, how their customers are using the apps, they are able to get uh, the IOPS, guaranteed IOPS to these customers to that level. Uh, the software basically flows uh, pretty good in regards to that. And that's the conclusion, like for a guaranteed instant performance, uh, you can use the VM-aware storage uh, from Tintree and the choice is you can click and configure, as I showed you, or you can automate it with the REST APIs. Thank you. Yes.